so we're back for another night hiking interview at Javaland. I have with me Hendrik Evers. Welcome. And we're going to chat a little bit about data effects and you know show yes. some code and a little demo. Demo. Yes. All very cool stuff. Cool. Um, all right. So for folks who don't know you, give yourself um, a quick. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm Hendrik Ebbers. Um, I'm Jack Reader from Dortmund, Germany, and yeah, do a lot of uh, JavaFX stuff. Um, for example, DataFX, um, AquaFX. I have a JavaFX blog. It's guigarage.com. I blog about JavaFX architecture and all this stuff. And yeah, currently I'm writing a book about uh, JavaFX. It's called Mastering JavaFX Controls. It's will be released in June by Oracle Press. So, nice. So that's about me. That's a, that's a good introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So you're going to join the, um, the elite JavaFX book author club soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So um, <clears throat> what would you like to show today? You want me to okay. switch your desktop? So I, I want to show um, DataFX 8, uh, it's mm. the new version of DataFX. And we think it will be released at Java 1 this year. And, nice. Um, I think people who, who know DataFX know about all this data reader stuff where we can yeah, read REST sources or uh, JDBC sources directly in uh, JavaFX without mm -hmm. concerning about uh, multi threading and all this stuff. And for DataFX 8, we have some new models. And one I want to show you is, is a DataFX flow. Um, I have a picture here. So think about a, a small application, maybe a master detail view application where you have a master view and you have, for example, a edit view or a detail view to, to edit um, entities that are listed in the master view or you have a view to create new entities. So um, with JavaFX, you can um, create all these views by using MVC. You can use FXML, for example, for the layout. Then you will have a controller that's written in JavaFX and inject all the UI nodes by um, using the add FXML annotation, for example. Mm. And with DataFX 8, we used this approach and add a lot of new stuff to, to create not only one view, but to create a complete flow of views. Um, uh, so just a call out to um, Johan Voss. Yes, uh, Johan Voss will be in the demo. Of, he, he's also watching the stream now. So. Hi, Johan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, the, the demo I want to show you is, is yeah, I, I will start it before we have a look at the code. So it's this master detail view demo. Um, so yeah, I can load some data here, yeah, three persons, for example. Um, I can edit the persons, save them, so it's directly here. I can add a new person, for example, or remove a person. So let's nice. remove Johan. Yes, we, okay. we're going to. We can always pick, pick fun of Johan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the demo. And now I want to show how this is implemented with the help of um, DataFX. So the first thing is our application class, and the first thing that is done is that a flow is created. A flow is the description of the flow between all the um, dialogues. So let me, and with a flow you can say, exa for example, okay, we have this master view controller, that's the controller for the first view, for the start view, mm -hmm. and then you can create rings, like the flow should have a link from the master view controller to the edit view controller, and the link is called edit. Or from the master view controller to the add view controller, that's the controller for the add new content view, and the link is called add. When looking at the controllers, I think people um, already know this, where you can simply inject a button, for example, and now you can add the, the defined actions of the flow by adding an annotation to the button, and when I click this button, the edit action of the flow will be called, and this is the link action, so when clicking this button on the master view controller, you will, yeah, the, the application will go to the edit view and the edit controller. Mm. 
and <coughs> that, that's all the basic of the flow. You can do, for ex add, for example, custom actions. When I um, click the remove button, there's a task action defined in the flow that has a unique ID remove. And at the, here was it, at the remove button, for example, the remove action is binded to the button by using this annotation. So you can simply <coughs> create the controllers, create the actions and the rings, and use annotations to, to bind all the actions and the rings of the flow in the view controllers. Um, another um, feature of the flow API is injection. Um, as you can see here, all the controllers are uh, not recreated. You only say, okay, it's this class, and JavaFX, uh, DataFX will create these controllers. And once the controllers are created, there's a dependency injection um, method in DataFX that will inject data to the controllers. Here, for example, my data model is injected to the master view controller, and this data model is, um, it contains the list of all persons. So this will be created by DataFX and simply injected in all the controllers, and then I can work with this data model. Um, maybe some people know this from AfterburnFX, for example, there you can uh, use injection too. Um, the injection in DataFX is, has scope, so it's really context dependency injection. We have four different scopes. When looking at the data model, it's defined in the flow scope. That means in one defined flow, in every place where you inject this class, it will be the same instance. Then we have the application scope. It's, it's like in Java FE, it's a singleton. We have the dependent scope like in Java EE, where whenever you inject um, this class, there will be a new instance. And we have a view scope, that's the first scope, um, the fourth scope. Um, if you have a controller and inject uh, <coughs> data that is defined by the view scope, it will be created for each controller instance, a new instance of that data. And uh, one benefit is when we have a look at the remove action, for the remove action, there's a remove action task class that defines the action. And in that case, we only we didn't create an instance of this class. We only say, okay, it's a remove action class. And the benefit is that we can use the injection in, in this action classes too. So you can simply use um, the same instance of the data model in your action classes where you can then directly remove, in this example, something um, from the data model and you can inject it in your controller, for example, and simply, I, I don't know, uh, show the list on screen or something like that. Yeah, that, that's uh, the main features of the um, DataFX Flow API and Another benefit of it is that there's a plugin system. So you can create your own plugins for the DataFX Flow API. And with DataFX 8, we have some of them. I want to show you two. One is a EGB plugin for the Flow API. With the EGB plugin, you can do the following. I will show you a controller. So this is a controller of another example. And what I did here, I have a white fly server with um, yeah, Java E web application running on it, and there's a remote EGB in this application. And mm -hmm. with DataFX and the Flow API, you can simply inject remote EGBs in your view controller and um, call, yeah, like, like this one, call methods on the remote EGB. So if you have a Java E application with EGBs, and at the moment, for example, you have a web, view, a web UI, you can simply create a JavaFX uh, desktop UI and reuse uh, the EGBs by just adding this remote EGB annotation. Another example for the plugin is a feature toggle. Um, we added feature toggle support in DataFX. Uh, let me show you this one, and you can create for application, um, yeah, it's, it's these uh, 
feature-driven development um, where you can define features for an application and activate the features or deactivate the features. And with DataFX, we added some nice annotations where you can directly use the features and code and, for example, add a disable by feature annotation for a button and if the feature 2 is disabled, the button wouldn't appear on screen. So you can, yeah, you can do a lot with it. For example, you can say, okay, half of my users won't see this button because I want to test it if it's cool or something. You can activate it at one time and, and the button will appear because internally there's the JavaFX binding API that binds the, the feature state to the visible property of the button, for example. Uh, another one um, is uh, validation. We added support for Java Bean validation. And by doing so, let me see. I think it's, which demo is it? Um, I think it's, no, it's this one. Um, yeah, it's, um, Um, here it is. Um, you can, here we have the controller from the demo that I shown earlier where you can add new users to the application. And there are some Java FX properties in the controller. And now I can use the default um, Java Bean validation annotations to yeah, validate these properties. For example, here I say the name property in the of a new user shouldn't be null. And I can show it. If I go here and say I want to add a new user and didn't type anything in the name field, so it's the name property shouldn't be null. So I think, I think we need to redeem Johan. Excuse me? We need to add back in Johan. He's complaining we removed him. Ah, okay. <laughs> No, I, I won't remove Johan. Um, yeah, and then you can use a, a validator. It's basically like the validator from Java Bean validation, and you can simply validate the, the, the data model, and you can react on, on the results of the validation directly in the JavaFX application thread. So, so these are... I think the, actually the most interesting new features in DataFX 8. Cool. So I noticed <coughs> in, the, in the definition you're using a lot of Lambda expressions and different things on the server Absolutely. side. Absolutely. So that's a recommended practice with DataFX? Absolutely. We, um, that's one thing I can show you. Um, we added a lot of Lambda stuff for um, DataFX. One example is a process chain. Um, people who um, work with Swing may know the, the Swing worker where you can say, okay, I do something in the UI stuff, uh, yeah. then in the background thread, and then in the UI thread, and um, <coughs> DataFX <coughs> introduce the process chain. That's, uh, that's a class where you can actually do the same, but you can do more. You can create a chain of processes, and you can... For each process, you can say, okay, this one will run on the JavaFX application thread, the next one will run in the background thread, uh, and so on, and so on. And the great benefit is that this, uh, here you can see, so you can say, okay, I want to add um, a function that is running in the platform thread, I want to add a function that is running in the executor thread. And the great benefit is that we use all the new um, Java um, functional interfaces here. And by doing so, you can, for example, oh, I will show you what you could do. Um, create, uh, let's say we want to invert something in an executor, and here we return, I don't know, hello. So this would be a method that, for example, calls a uh, server and do some stuff. And then, um, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? Uh, oh, well, it's not working. 
Let me see. Um, so normally you can this this is a function that returns hello, and when when you add a, a new process to the chain, like not an executor mm. and platform, you can use the return value of the previous function as the input value for for the next function, but it can run on another thread. Ah, it's this. not the return. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Thank you. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So and now I can, for example, say uh, e, and e will be the hello string, and I can say I don't know button pong dot set text uh, e, for example, and and then the button there's actually no button in it. You can get rid of those too. In a single parameter, it's optional. Ah, okay. <laughs> Great, thank you. So the, actually there's <coughs> no me. button in it, but then you can, for example, load a string from a server or load anything from a server and then add it, for example, oh. as a text for a button. Another yeah, one? No, that's a good example of yes. um, Lambda expressions to... Yes. The another support for um, Lambdas is the StreamFX. It's, oh. it's um, yeah, maybe you know the, the Stream API of um, Java 8. And with the stream FX, you can use the stream Good. API directly in uh, JavaFX on the JavaFX application thread. Nice. So you, it will be created by a stream. And then you can do stuff like uh, for each. And the for each will directly call it on the, yeah, on the JavaFX application thread. So you can create a stream that, I don't know, do some calculations. Uh, Call the server, map reduce some data, and then you do this for each. And the result, the list will be directly um, used on the JavaFX nice, application nice. thread. So cool. there's a lot so, of so it looks like you have lots of new improvements in, in data effects. Excuse me. Lots of new improvements in yes, data effects. Yes, absolutely. Um, so anything you want to mention in closing, maybe. Um, reference for people to go to to, to ah, find okay. more about data effects yes, or uh, absolutely so I, I don't have um, Wi-Fi here but it's uh, we, we, we dot uh, let me think it's not datafx.com it's javafxdata.org I think yes yeah, javafxdata.org java that's uh, the, the website of um, Of JavaFX, uh, DataFX. Yeah, we're, and, we're helping uh, we out have people on the stream. It's now. Oh, okay. We have. <laughs> it's on the stream. Text. Documentation <laughs> and uh, all this stuff there. So the, the website is growing. Actually, we're doing a lot of, as you can see here, a lot of um, Java doc. And um, the next one, and um, creating some examples for DataFX cool. 8. Have you and submitted to Java 1 yet? Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we should we should let the, the track lead for clients. Track leads for clients. Track leads. Track leads. Java one track leads. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're politely okay. they're politely ignoring us because they're yes. they're very busy reviewing papers <laughs> now. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> All right, okay. awesome. So. Thanks very much, Henrik. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you in San Francisco. Cool. Me too. <laughs> <laughs>